All right. Here comes trouble, I'm sure of it. We are going to rock tonight. I want the screaming lady. Somebody tell me if I'm on, uh, if I'm on. Somebody send me a, you know, message. The wormhole awaits you. Am I on? And here it comes the thunder. Let's do it. Aha. Kind of makes a statement. you. We will, we will rock you. Take a ride from the high desert and the great American Southwest. This is Midnight in the Desert, exclusively on the Dark Matter Digital Network. To call the show, dial 1-952-CALL-ART. That's 1-952-225-5278. We are rocking you, and somebody needs to send me a message through the wormhole telling me if we are indeed on Periscope right now. So I'll be checking that. I don't really know. I think I started it up, but, well, I'm still learning about all this. All right. Uh, we've got a scantily clad lady, barefooted in the snow and ice, with the headlights of my collar bearing down on her. <laughs> and what happened? Well, um, I got halfway out of my car, and I said, ma'am, because she was kind of heading for my car, but it was obvious she wasn't paying attention to me or the car. Right. She was stumbling. Right. And I said, ma'am, and she didn't respond at all, and I said it again, and she didn't respond at all, and suddenly I got very spooked, and I slammed the car door and ran back to my girlfriend, and to my girlfriend's house. Uh-huh. And she could tell I was spooked. And in my mind, all these things were going on. Um, I knew that there was a nursing home uh, not too far up the ground uh, road, like on the edge of town. Okay. And, so I, and my girlfriend actually worked in the kitchen department of that nursing home. Yeah, I was going to ask you if she, if she was stumbling like she was sick or what? Yeah, she looked distraught. Okay. And so I told my girlfriend what had happened. She grabbed the phone, and we went outside. And... She instantly, my girlfriend instantly started laughing and making, calling me a jerk, thinking I was making a joke because she was nowhere to be found. Yes. And I, I kept insisting that this happened. Right. And there was, but she pointed out that in my headlights there were no feet footprints at all in the snow. Huh. And so we kind of looked in the ditch a little bit, and she refused. My girlfriend refused to call anybody. She thought I was joking. So you probably uh, said, right. "Honey, was something this scary out here? I've really got to stay with you tonight." <laughs> Well, I should say that if this, if this woman was trying to warn me for my girlfriend, I should have listened. <laughs> oh, <gee. laughs> but um, huh. uh, she refused to call anybody, and I started questioning my own sanity there. That I, I must have been seeing things, so I went home. And like I said, it's a, it's about a, a ten minute drive on a very dark gravel road. Right. And I used to listen to you because it was early in the morning, and so I'd stay freaked out on that road all the time. <laughs> Your show always freaked me out. <laughs> My so, show freaks uh, me out half the time. <laughs> well, so the next night, same thing. I was at my girlfriend's house. I go uh -huh. out to start my car, and I'm spooked, but the same thing happened. The oh, you're, you're kidding. Out. The same lady and everything? Yeah. Same lady, some, same stumbling from up behind the same pine trees, and same thing. I ran back in the house, but this time I didn't say anything. Wow. When it, when it came well, I don't, I don't blame you, uh, so go ahead. I wouldn't well, have said anything either. 
Yeah, I, I decided it wasn't worth going through it again. And when I went back to get my car to go home, no, nobody was there. Same thing. Right. And this happened off and on the exact same way for that entire break. And I went back to college after the break was over. And fast forward in time, I don't know what break it was on, but there was no longer any snow on the ground. I was still seeing my girlfriend. And I got in my car one night, started heading home, and there's a campground. Um, right off this gravel road uh, between her house and my house. And I saw somebody standing at like this orange gate at the entry to the ground, at the campground. I didn't think anything of it, but I could see it in my headlights as I was coming up. And as I got closer, I realized it was that woman. The same and woman. Seasons same have changed, and it's the same woman. Seasons have changed, same woman, same dress, you know, same like nightgown or whatever. Now we're talking same ghost. long hair. Yeah, that's so that's what I figured. Yep. And she looked directly at my car and her head followed my car as I drove by her. That's the first time that I real and I, as I got home I realized that's the first time she's ever looked at me. That's pretty freaky too. Yeah, I was so scared. Um and I so time time is a little confusing to me now, but then a few nights later or a few weeks later I pulled into my, I was living with my mom and dad while, you know, I was going to school. Right. And so that's where I was going from my house to my girlfriend's house. So I pull into my mom and dad's house and I get out and I start heading for the, the front door. And my mom and dad lived in town, but a very small town. And the woman walked from around my mom and dad's house towards the front door right for me. She was maybe 10 feet from me. Same thing, stumbling looking mostly at the ground, wringing her hands. Okay. And I, I got spooked. I ran in the house as fast as I could. And that's the and end of the story? The it's not. Okay, well, um, we have to get there because we do have some right. time limits. I definitely, definitely will get there. Okay. That's, that kept happening to the point where I was going around the back of the house to go into the back door because I wouldn't see her. And one day it was bright middle of the day i'm laying on the I'm lying on the living room floor watching tv the phone rings i get up and i look out the front windows as i'm going for my phone and the woman is standing in the highway in front of my mom and dad's house staring right at the front door oh my and let me tell you if if you think things are freaky in the middle of the night yeah. they're even freakier in broad daylight cause they're not supposed to happen <laughs> in broad daylight definitely coming for your soul yeah, because the next day, the last time I saw her was the next day, same thing, saw her standing right in the middle of the road. This time she was clutching her nightgown, screaming at the top of her lungs, although I couldn't hey, hear a word, hey. and her it looked like there was some sort of stain all over the front of her nightgown. Well, she was looking directly at the front door, and I, I've never seen her since. God, this is a message for you. But what happened with the girlfriend? Oh, I, I got rid of her not long after that. <laughs> Uh, maybe that was the message all along. All right, thank you very, very much for the call. The lady who kept coming back until, well, until she didn't. All right, let's see. I'm trying to make a circuit here. Going outside the country somewhere, you're on the air, YLP. Hi, Art. How are you? I'm well. It sounds like another Australian to me. Indeed, I, I've been made aware that there's been a lot of Australians on, on the air tonight, so I'm, I'm glad that you chose me. Glad and to I have you. I must admit that I've not listened to your show very often, but I, uh, I went and visited my, uh, my boyfriend at the end of last year, and he introduced me to you, and since then I've been fascinated by a lot of your uh, discussion topics, especially Mel's Hole. Oh, um, yes. I, well, I, I would surely, you know, I'd it, love uh, to hear from we'll, Mel again. I Indeed, wonder, I wonder, so I, well, so. you know, actually, Mel is supposed to be in Australia, actually. Oh, really? Oh, yes, well, yes. I'll, I'll uh, Mel contracted, so you know, and, uh, so you know, sir, it. Mel contracted cancer and oh. was last heard to have gone to Australia. So I don't know what to tell you. Watch for guys around holes. <laughs> 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 indeed, indeed. Sounds good. Well, okay. uh, all, all the best for your ongoing show. Um, Thank you. I'm, I'm uh, very excited to continue listening to your exciting stories and uh, those of others. Well, now we have you. Do you have one? Indeed, indeed. Thank you. Do you, Yes, do you have a story? Uh, no, unfortunately, I, I don't have any fancy stories, but um, I, I, I very much enjoy hearing those stories of people around. Well, I okay, then. Uh, thank you for calling, and um, cheerio. Cheerio. Okay. Bye. Take care. 
All right, to, um, let's see, Skype here uh, in North America. You're on the air. Hello. Uh, is this me? It is. Oops. Oh, I am so sorry. Jack W. Jack W., buddy, I'm sorry. If I see you pop up again, I, I just did that by mistake. Maybe, maybe he's calling back. No, it's not Jack W. It's a Jack. Jack, you're on. The, yeah, it is Jack W. Jack, buddy, you made it back. No, but I can't believe I got through. Is this the one and only Mr. Art Bell? It is. Um, You're not Jack W., huh? No, unfortunately, I wish I was, apparently. You're, you're another Jack. I'm a Jack. I am Jack from Miami, Florida. <laughs> All right, Jack. Jack W. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad sorry, I got man. through to you. Welcome back, Mr. B. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. No, no, and I mean that sincerely. Mr. Bell, I, if, I, I'm going to make it quick because I know we have time constraints. Yes. And the clock, and since you're into time travel, so am I, I can emphasize with you. Let me bring my point to fruition, as sure. I say. Sure, Do you remember the interview you did with Father Malachi Martin in 1997 regarding the, and not, to, to, to get to the point, the uh, Vatican having built an observatory in Mount Graham in Arizona? Oh, yes. Thank you. Well, that being said and done, as they say, I uh, I remember the reply that Father Malachi, may he rest, uh, had stated to you that in the highest uh, the highest levels of governance at the Vatican, uh-huh. they were observing something in space that may be of great importance in the future. Um, that Do you is. You remember that? Uh, well, I I don't remember him referring to a specific. Thing. No, I know, I know, but vaguely, vaguely, do you recall that him that they were that he did make reference to, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that might be now, mind you, uh, that they were observing something that would be of some great importance in five to ten years in the future. No, I I don't remember that detail. I I remember the Vatican was watching for something. Now well, I I'm not sure what that something was, frankly. Why well, would and, it, I, and I can tell it, you this, sir. Um, I am so, you can't believe how I'm, yeah, I'm calming down. I'm excited because I'm talking to you. Okay. What I'm do making, you, what do you think they were looking for? I don't necessarily know. And I'm not going to get theologic or being in theology and complicate a wonderful conversation that I am enjoying myself, mind you. But what I'm trying to say, sir, is it was almost prophetic. Uh, he said within five to ten years into the future, this would be of some relevance, okay? Mm-hmm. Well, in 2007, the Vatican had a conference with certain representatives of, of the Jesuit order from Mount Graham. Right. In 2009, they had, and there's a message to my madness here, so follow me, and I'm going to be trying, I'm trying, trying to be fast, because I know you're looking at the clock like I am. Um, the, the situation is, is that your name has come up many a times in a prophetic, uh, uh, a sense with regards to Mr. Bell, the fact that a conference was held in 2009 at the Vatican with both uh, atheists and and religious representatives of the various different uh, scientific disciplines regarding the possibility of what possibly could be an influence or a change on Earth from something that may come from, shall we say, possibly out there, maybe. So that conference was held, and your your conversation with him was of prophetic, um, shall we say, relevance to Well, that. did you hear Leo Ashcraft's newscast a little while ago? Something? No, I didn't. I apologize. Oh, I wish I had. It. Why? Could you bring me up to date on that? Well, he was talking about asteroids and doomsday and stuff like that. Ah, I vaguely heard some of that as I was, I was trying to see if I could catch Catch in. Yes, well, uh, Doomsday, do, yeah, that. Doomsday and asteroids would be something that the Vatican would be definitely on the lookout for. Well, I wanted you to know that your name has been mentioned many a times in relate in relationship to that particular. Hmm. Um, uh, 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 I'm trying to find the words because I'm looking at the clock myself, as you probably are. That that your 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 point and that con- that particular question that you asked, sir was extremely relevant to the fact that that conference was held in 2009. Well, there's one thing, there's one thing, sir, I don't want to be part of, and that's prophecy. No, 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 and I apologize if I infringed on anything like that. (laughs) No, no, no. No, no, no. look, look, listen, I don't want to lose you, I want to keep you. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know what I'm Thank saying? You. I mean, I like listening to you, and I and I and I and I don't want to be part of any prophecy either. But what I'm saying is that there is some correlation, and 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 what do you? What is your take on that? Um, I I don't know because I don't know what it is that we're talking about uh, specifically. I'm sorry, I I can't help you out. Um, I miss Father Malachi Martin so much. I know all of you do. And I don't want to say that I'm looking for another Malachi because I'm not going to find one. But I have found an interesting priest. And I'm going to leave it at that for now. As you know, I don't advertise guests ahead of time for extremely good reasons. Uh, but I'm telling you that I'm on to something. I, I guess that's the best way to put it. Let's go to um, Sedona, Arizona on the phone. You're on the air. Hi. Hey, good evening, Art. How you doing? I'm doing well, long sir. Time, long, long time fan. I first heard uh, Art Bell when back in the 90s when uh, Strange Universe uh, did a feature on you. Oh, that's right. I've been listening, listening religiously since. Uh, I'm an advanced quantum mechanics physicist, and I'm oh. sitting here with the illustrious, beautiful Linda. Um, and the reason uh, for the call was we we kind of entertained this idea a, a while back, but we didn't know where we wanted to break this story. Break it here. And I couldn't, I couldn't think of a better place than to do it on the Art Bell Show. All right, fire uh, away. What have you done? Well... Well, here we go. Uh, it was about uh, about a year ago, wasn't it, Linda? Uh, back in uh, it was like last year in March, and she saw me on YouTube, and she reached out and said, "Is there something that you could do for me medically?" And I said, "Well, I do take a few select cases from time to time on." Tell me about yours. Okay, well, uh, when you keep saying Linda, you're not talking about our Linda Moulton Howe, right? You use the last name. I don't want you to do that. I'm sorry I had to take it out. Linda is oh, your Linda. Linda is your friend? Uh, yeah, best friend. Best friend, and, okay. There you go. And uh, so about a year ago when she found me on the web, she uh, reached out and asked me if I would help her in her medical condition. Okay. And so what we did... Uh, Linda here was pretty much uh, shattered from nose to toe in a terrible drunken driving uh, accident. Drunken driver uh, hit her and, and, uh, well, it it smashed her entire body. Her uh, then uh, pregnant son was born in a coma. Oh, my God. Uh, He's doing good today. Uh, But Linda has went through about, uh, what, 12 now? Not count. Yeah, she's went through about uh, twelve uh, botch surgeries. They've cut nerves. They've uh, they've 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 left her yeah. uh, to a state where she would never walk again. Oh my! Very bad. Yes. I uh, I took on this case, and Linda's uh, pretty happy to say that we walked across the uh, uh, island that we live here uh, a mile. She sure. runs up and down. Three, two, uh, okay, okay. Let, be, you know, we don't have a lot of time, but what did you do for her? Well, uh, we use frequencies. She uh, dropped her off all of the meds. Uh, we now use a, I use a frequency-based technology that I've designed. Okay, but how and, do you deliver? Uh, hold on. How do you deliver the frequency? Is it an audio frequency? Is it an um, a frequency of uh, radio? Uh, waves, RF, what? We do it via text message, Art. Really? This is the most advanced way out there. With how do you how do you text? I'm sorry. How do you text a frequency? Well, it's a standard text message. Yes. Uh, you know, a picture image, and then we attach a uh, a vibrational uh, specific vibrational code frequency. And then I use the telephone number as the quantum entanglement code, <laughs> thus matching the telephone number with the image once it arrives, and you get about a about a ten inch field uh, that. Uh, um, now you you under, you understand this sounds pretty crazy and wild, right? Well, 
we don't. I have two world records that have been tested. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just saying it. You you understand it sounds pretty wild. Uh, yeah, it sounds pretty wild. Okay, so I I hear Linda. Yep, I hear Linda in the background. Linda, I want you to I want you to come to the phone and tell me if you've been cured by text frequencies. Oh, well, it started on a text frequency. Uh, he also has a, a Digimon program um, right. that uh, runs similarly. So I've had several treatments with that and the uh, holographic treatments with the text. And um, nerves were regenerated that were cut for 16 years. Wow. So That's you're here, you're here to testify, Linda, that it really works. Oh, it really works. <laughs> It's beyond work. Yeah, I, I, there's about 1,800. <laughs> what does she mean, beyond works? Well, I mean it beyond works because, as a matter of fact, uh, when when I discussed all of the problems I was having, because I wasn't only just the accident, I have had multiple problems um, with improper medical treatment, and a few years back I was actually have a doctor empty a bottle of Bovacaine into my main valve at a routine checkup. Well, you, you sure do sound happy now, Linda. Yeah, I'm doing great now, better oh. than I have been in 17 years, so it, it's something to be really excited about. It, it certainly is. All right, thank you very much. Text frequency treatments. I've got a bad back. Maybe I'll ship you my cell number. Boy, I'll tell you what. Text frequencies. Now I need to find out if I'm on Periscope. I hope I am. Let me see. Sideways. For some reason you were sideways. Well, yeah, I'm sideways. That's the way to do it. Uh, let's see. Saw your office on Periscope. I love your commute. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a delay between Periscope and radio, and that all has to do with digital stuff. Um, let's see. 300 views on Periscope. Hey, Periscope. Okay, we're on. I wasn't sure. Okay. We'll do another half hour. Another half hour of watching the back of my head. Can you, you can see me, right? I hope. Man, this is wild stuff. Look at all those people. Amazing. The darkness, 97. Ooh, I wonder who that is. There she is, screaming lady! What to do? Boom! I gotta not sing. Normally I do. Apology. Anybody else? Just watching her grow. I can't help it. What a fool believes. Wise man has a power. Wise man has the power. Well, now here I am, and let's see where to go. It's open lines. We're talking about any paranormal event that's happened in your life that you think others would find interesting. 
There obviously are many. Let's go outside the country this time and say hello to somebody who names themselves the Darkness 97. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if you um, remember um, your first test show, Mark. Me. Of course I do. I. Why? Because uh, I, I was I was one of the first callers. Mark. Oh, I was giggling all the time. <laughs> I see. Uh, and you are in Australia. No, I'm in the UK. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's a pretty serious error, uh, geographically and otherwise. Um, okay, in the United Kingdom, excellent. Uh, yes. And I'm sure glad to have you. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I we don't a... we don't get too many of you over there, and the reason is at time. It's um it's really sad, but what time is it there? It is six oh two in the morning. Yes. So in other words, unless we can catch somebody with a cup of coffee and a real serious story, um, we're unlikely to hear from people at that hour. Anyway, it's good to have you. Thank you, sir. I have a quick story for you. Yes, sir. The apartment that we live in, we've lived here for twenty six years. And uh, the first Christmas that we were here, our doorbell plays 30 tunes. It's one of those uh, tunes, tune ones. And um, the first Christmas day, 7.30 in the morning, um, it played the whole, uh, went through the whole list by itself. By itself? Yes, sir. And there was nobody at the doors, either of them. So, do you consider that to be a scary horror or a miracle of Christmas? Well, this is the thing, because um, the following Christmas, we were sat around eating lunch, our lunch, and uh, this this was obviously afternoon, and uh, it did the same thing, and that was the following Christmas. Well, that really sounds like a Christmas miracle to me. (laughs) Probably. Well, that's kind of a cool story, really. Has uh, it, I mean, is that it, did it ever happen again? No, uh, it's just the first first two Christmases we were here. No, I would say that's really cool, and I think yeah. if it happened to me, I would consider it to be a Christmas miracle. <laughs> Excellent. I really appreciate your story. Thank you. Uh, some some paranormal things, you know, can be miracles, right? And that's kind of what that sounds like. If if it automatically played twice, two Christmases in a row, yeah, I'd consider it a miracle, sure. Oh, what the heck. Outside the country one more time very quickly. Scott, um, uh, hello, Scott. Hi. Hi. Uh, where are you, pray tell? Uh, Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Mmm, wrong line, Scott. Huh? Wrong line. Um, oh, you know, people waiting. Well, I, I do, but, you, you know, um, you see, you're supposed to call MITD51 if you're in North America, oh. and you definitely are. Yeah, I did. I could not get an answer at that. And well, I, I, I understand the because... The problem is I can't get a hold right. of a radio station to listen to you, so I tried calling the Skype number. That was the only thing I could find. To I understand. Okay, well, I'm sorry, but I've got to leave you. Uh, try MITD51. 51. There are so many waiting that it's just, you know, it's not, not fair. Um, here's James. Uh, James on Skype, North America, you're on the air. How's it going, Art? It's going, me... going well, sir. Yeah. Extinguish your device immediately. I am. I am. I got the computer going cool. Okay. Um, I have something that's going to touch hold to you because you are on Kadena. Scott, I, uh, I still hear it. You do? Yes, yeah, so now it's it's going. Um, I was indeed at Kadena Air Force Base, uh, right. Okinawa, yes. Towards Naha on Highway 58, there was a base on the right-hand side that was called uh, Camp Kinzer. Do you remember that Marine uh, Corps base? I absolutely do. I spent almost a decade there, buddy. Yeah, I spent a long time there, too. Anyways, uh, I was a military policeman in the Marine Corps. Uh, I'm a contractor now. I've been in Afghanistan and Iraq numerous times, but I, I want to get to the story. Sure. Here is the funny part. We get a call one night. Now, you remember you had security all over 
for certain sensitive places. Oh, yes. This place was PWR, Preposition War Reserve. Mm-hmm. And that meant guns and different things in this building. Right. Well, that building during your era was used to hold corpses. And it, they, there was freezer areas. Hmm. And, and during the war, in the, in the Second World War, they had landing strips. If you've been on Kinzer, you know what I mean, those big, long roads. I don't think I was ever on base there. Okay. Well, anyways, um, I get a call one night that something's going on at this PWR, and it was first, I, I'd only been there maybe a month. Mm -hmm. And then I find out later that this is common. And since it's paranormal, paranormal this is why i'm calling in okay um i go in there and these guys are like freaked out there was a dark green in the marine corps dark green means black light green means white right there was a mixed couple guarding okay and the dark green was ashen gray i'm not joking you my brother my veteran brother and mm -hmm. uh they're both freaked out are you there I'm here. Okay. Anyways, what ended up happening was they're like, they were speechless and they're just pointing. So I go in there to check it out. Now, I'm walking through the boxes and the different things that are in there, and I see an apparition. And it was like midriff. Uh, there was no bottom, but there was a top in form. But remember how looking through... Well, are you saying like half a body? Well, do you remember how looking through the old night vision? I'm a Cold Warrior, too. I was in the Army before yes. I was in the Marine Corps. Yes, uh, I know about night vision. Yeah, and remember how it was just a ghost image? Sure. Back in the day, now it's brilliant. That's but, right. But the thing is, is, it was just like night vision, except I'm looking with my own eyes, and it was like smoke. And this Ooh. thing, and it had form. I, I I really wish I could describe it better, but um, it it kind of looked at me and walked into the freezer through the wall, through that freezer wall, that steel oh, door, stainless yeah. steel door. That would do it for me. And of course, I went right behind it and opened the door, and there was nothing in there. Of course. So not. that's the only reason I called. Oh, that's plenty. That's plenty of reason to call, my friend. <laughs> I, I listened to you uh, since my son's now 17 on 6:10 a.m. in you know, Columbus, Ohio, is where I listened to you from back in the day. Okay, well, thank you very, very much for the call. And yes, Dad knows me as Sword Point Knot. God bless Art. All right, thank you, sir. God bless you too, and. Yeah, you know, if you see something walk through a wall, you know you're... Uh... Actually, I don't think I would have gone and opened the door, frankly. Really, I would not have. But, you know, people do what they do. In other words, anything that walks through a wall, probably I don't want to see when I open the door. Thankfully, he didn't see it, right? But <laughs> what if he had? On the phone, uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma... It says you're on the air. Hello, Art. How are you? I am well, sir. Thank you. Many, many, many Roswells to you. Thank you. And um, I'm looking at you on uh, Periscope. Oh, really? I forgot, about, I forgot about that clock. I just love that clock. I do, too. I, I wish I could get one. Well, you, <laughs> you, you can. They're gettable, but they're, yeah. not, they're not cheap, I'll tell you. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, wow. you you can get one. Um, well, you know, I don't exactly want to give out the name. That's free advertising. Um, okay. Okay. You know, but what the hell? Uh, let's see. It's uh, B R G Precision. That's B R G Baker Robert George Precision. You know, right. and they're, they're they're not cheap, but uh, but they're wonderful. They you plug Ethernet into them, and it keeps time by the atomic time servers. Great. As I've mentioned gonna... before, I saw this baby, you know, in, uh, in in Paris, France, at Radio France International, 
and I did everything but rip it off the wall. I begged those people. There was no label saying who made it, so I had to find it. <laughs> I remember. I remember <laughs> the stories. Yes. <laughs> anyway, what's my up? Name, my name is Tony, and I'm from Norman, Oklahoma, which is about uh, 30 miles south of Oklahoma City. Okay. Um, and I've talked to you twice before. Um the last story I told you was uh, about um, a foot that I felt under a couch. Oh. Um, <laughs> and this happened about five years ago this past um, 4th of July. Okay. I, I was at my brother's house, and they were, he has um, so, uh, some kids, and uh, they were doing fireworks. And um, all the lights were off outside of the house. Uh, the outside of the house lights up. It's got a lot of spot spotlights. You so just you just off. reminded me of lights, sir. I should turn this light off, actually, and I should turn the back light on so that people can see better. Thank you. Continue. <laughs> and um, so it was it was dark out there. Mm -hmm. So about three hours later. I decided I was going to go home. So I walked out the front door. All the lights were out. It was dark. Mm -hmm. And I hit the clicker for my car to unlock the, uh, unlock the car. And the headlights come on. And I wasn't looking at the headlights or around the headlights because I know they come on. <laughs> and the headlights, out of the, the corner of my eye, I saw something standing, and I looked to there, to there, and there was a gray standing there. It was a gray, as in gray aliens that we talk about? Yes. How tall? And about three and a half, four feet. And the face? It looked like the normal gray alien depicted? Oh, yes, exactly. And it just stood there. It was looking at me. I was looking at it. Yeah, I bet. And it was had to be about 45 seconds. And for the longest time, I, I kept thinking about why, yeah. why was he standing there so long? And I, I thought, well, I maybe he's the one I know. What do you mean because the I, one? What do you mean the one you know? I have had. A, Abduction or ah, okay. experiences. All right. So that's the only thing I can think of as to why he stood there so long. But okay. he turned and walked through this uh, tall grass that came up to about its knees. And um, I never saw anything move the way this thing moved. It just turned, and I, I can't tell if it was running or, or what. But it it moved so fast around the back of the house. Okay, let me ask this: Was it when you say the way it moved? Um, was it as though you know? I mean, if you run, there's a motion, right? Yes. Was it like that, I, or like it just you know smoothly moved fast? I didn't see any bounce as if it was running. Wow. Uh, but it, it it was moving extremely fast. I've never seen anything okay. move this fast. And in the distance, after it went behind the house, I I thought I saw it jump the fence. And it had to be about 30 feet if what I saw was that. And I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So I turned around, I went into the house, and everybody was watching TV. There was about 10 or 12 people there. <laughs> and um, Yeah, what do you, what do, you do? Interrupt 10 or 12 people watching TV? Guess what I just saw? <laughs> I, I stood in front of the coffee table, and my brother and his wife were sitting on the couch beyond that. Right. And I stopped, and I stood there, and I said, I just saw gray. And my brother said, What? And I said, I just saw gray. And he said, where? And it was right out. Right he, he, no, 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 wait a moment. 
if if the average person goes into a room and says, I just saw a gray, they're going to say, a gray what? Right? Well, he knows. What it, he he, know, knows he what knew it. your history with grays. Yes. Okay. So everybody jumped up, of course. turned on the lights outside. Right. Everybody ran outside. Got it. And uh, there was this 12 or 13-year-old girl who was just about the same size as it was. And she was standing right near where it was. And I, you could see a path in the, in the grass. You could actually see where it had gone through in right. the grass. Right, right. And um, the next day they said that uh, they had two dogs. And one dog, you would have to drag him in out of the rain. He didn't like to come in at all. Yeah. And this dog, this, the next night, ran to the back of the house, came in the front door, ran to the back of the house. The other dog would not go near the front door. My brother wouldn't go in anywhere near the front of the house, and neither would his wife. And they said that there was, I can't remember now what they said, but there was something going on outside that apparently scared the dogs or whatever. And uh, it, it ooh. I, I don't know why, but I wasn't surprised. I wasn't shocked. I wasn't afraid. It was just there, and I looked at him, and he looked at me. So you're that. you're really familiar with grays? Yeah. A lot of gray experience, you might say. Uh, for yeah. me, anything that a dog is afraid of, probably... I would be afraid of, too, from the high desert. This is midnight in the desert. Graze, 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 graze. I would love to see a gray. I guess you ought to say that cautiously, huh? Good morning, everybody. Yes. I know I've got him. Jack W. I I got him. I got him. I got him. Not to worry. No, no. I got him. Bye. Yes, Jack W. is back. He's right there. I can only answer one at a time. That's true. I've got Jack W. back. Coffee. Love this thing.
Can you tell? Can you tell I like thunder? <laughs> oh, it so rocks. Resort. All right. Getting down on my hands and knees. Really, I am. Actually, I am on my hands and knees. It is Jack W., who I cut off without mercy by mistake earlier. Jack, I am so, so sorry, buddy. And you are on the air. You know what? Our, I, I'm actually kind of glad you cut me off. Why? I had my front door open and a train came by, buddy. <laughs> would have completely covered me <laughs> <laughs> well anyway i am so sorry it was just a you know i'm still learning about all this stuff hey you know what it happens now get up off the floor before you hurt your back and miss the shows next <laughs> week oh <huh? laughs> you're right actually all right so now that we got that out of the way let me let me start this fresh with a roswells and kegsburg from the U new york pennsylvania porter Okay. I've been waiting years to talk to you, sir, and I was even next up on Spooky Matter. Oh, yes. And cut me off at the end of the show. Right. Well, it's going to be Ghost to Ghost Digital this year. Well, see, the, the thing is, though, because it's a nice theme, I can give you one of those stories that I would have given you that night. All right. Lay it on me. The town I grew up in here in, in you know, the New York Pennsylvania border is a very, very active town, and I have no idea why. All I can guess is that we have a mound. A mound. You know, yeah, a mound. A mound builder mound that's not on the charts. Well, I don't know what a mound builder mound is. Um, uh, it's a, it was a group of Native Americans that built mounds. Oh. They were kind of tied in with the Mayans, I guess. Okay. I'm not an expert. All right. I'm not going to be. I'm not even going to claim to be. Okay. Like a Mayan but, mound. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they built it here because there's an energy here. Anyway, I grew up a block away from a cemetery, and I'm sure you've heard tons of cemetery stories over the years. But I'm just going to toss this one onto the pile because it's pretty cool. You can never get enough cemetery stories. Go right ahead. That's what I always say. <laughs> in, in the middle of this cemetery is a tree that has a scar down the side of it in the shape of a lightning bolt. Oh, from, the, oh. from as high as you can see to the base. Okay. Next to that tree is a, a grave marker that's made out of steel that's been painted with the bust of the, the plot's owner, that head will follow you if you're under 18. Mm. The head will follow you. It will. If you're under 18. If you're under 18. If you're over 18, then you don't have to worry about anything in this cemetery. If you try to do vandalism... The cemetery hurts you. Really? I've actually, I, I went to school with with a kid that went in there and to kick over headstones because oh, they were the yeah. you know the ones that are like three or four inches thick, but they're tall. Yeah, well, anybody who does that deserves whatever they get. Yes. Well, I I I was talking to him one day. He's he said to me, yeah, he's going to go kick over some headstones. The next day, when I saw him, he not only had a broken leg, but he had broken three fingers on his on his hand as well. Did he mention um, how the graveyard did that? Yeah. How? He did. Uh, he twisted and broke his ankle in a sinkhole that we could never find because we went back yes. looking for it. Yes. And he broke his fingers trying to catch himself on the same headstone that he kicked over. There is a karmic god. Yes, there is. Absolutely, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one whale of a story, I must say. And I sure. I hope with all my heart that that's true. And, and I guess that is the stuff of legends. So it's like you stay away from that graveyard. Absolutely. And you never take a mirror into that graveyard. A mirror? Mm-hmm. Why? Because it will burn your hand. It'll burn your hand? Yep. 
anything else about it? Oh, uh, there's there's a few other little quirks. That's quite enough, actually. Yeah, it's it's quite enough. I'm not. I don't want to. I know there's other people out there. I know there's other people out there. In fact, I was ta- I've been talking <laughs> to one all evening. <laughs> I see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. Let somebody else get on. All here. right. Well, all I can say is that the dope got what he deserved, and maybe he deserved more. That's horrible. Absolutely yeah. horrible. All right, my friend. Thank you very, very much for the call. And, of course, again, excuse the drop. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, you got me back on. 73rd, (laughs) sir. Keep your stick on the ice. (laughs) That's a ham radio thing. Um, Let's go by phone to, well, it says Mansfield, Ohio. I never really know. People move around so much now. Hello. Hey, how you doing there, Art? Very well, sir. Thank you. That's great to hear you again. Uh, this is Steve in Ohio. Uh, got a UFO story to tell you, a little little quickie. I was just sitting here uh, at my desk, uh, minding my own business, just playing on the computer, and and I, I sometimes go to the door and look out. And I looked out, and to the left of my house, there was a green, kind of like a welding torch. Uh, light, but it it was in a it was in an empty field, which there used to be. Wait, a, wait, 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 wait! Are you telling me this is happening tonight? No, 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 no. Okay, no, this right. happened. I, this happened back in the past. All I, right, I can't remember, like a year ago, maybe. Oh, gotcha. And uh, yeah, and it was a like it was green. It was big, and it was green, and it was like a welding torch, a light, real bright, and right. nobody else seen it because I've I've even asked one of my neighbors, which lives uh, two two or two houses up from me, who I know, and he didn't see it, but I told him about it too. But anyway, I just want to tell you, I don't want to really. Uh, I, well, you do know where I am, so the men in black may be coming, right? <laughs> That's right. All right, thank you very much. All right, all right. I love you, man. Take care. Keep your eye on the sky. From the high desert, great American Southwest. Anything you want to talk about, fair game. Okay, everybody, bye.